Welcome back to Adobe Live. It's so good to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Sam, Umicorn, Bliss. Good to see you all. Thank you so much. Hello, hello, hello. Um, today we are joined on DTIYS by the lovely Reagan, at, aka Regonia. How are you doing, Reagan? Hi, Cody. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, I hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. Hey, Gareth. Hey, good to see you guys. Thank you so much for stopping in. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys are not familiar with what DTIYS or Draw This In Your Style is, basically, I will give you a rundown of what the stream is like. Um, basically, Draw This In Your Style is when an illustrator will make a specific illustration uh, for this hashtag, and then they will invite anyone and everyone to recreate that exact illustration in their own artistic style. But on this stream, we are doing that with a little bit of a twist. So me and Reagan came up with a theme together. And we each created an illustration uh, before the stream and we are now swapping them on stream and we are going to draw each other's on stream. Um, so yeah, if you guys are unfamiliar with Reagan's work, um, we can uh, give it over to her and we can uh, give her a chance to give a little intro and, and we can uh, show some of her work off if you wanna let uh, the lovely people know who you are, Reagan. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Hi everyone, my name is Reagan Dickard um, on uh, the internet, I'm Ragonia, and my business is Ragonia Art. I'm a freelance artist and illustrator in Seattle, Washington. Uh, but this is the Draw This In Your Style that Cody will be drawing uh, today. Um, I've been drawing for, or illustrating for about three years, and I use uh, digital illustration, gouache, uh, Posca markers, markers, ink, Clay. I, I like to do any kind of um, <laughs> any kind of uh, uh, artistic medium I can get my hands on. I like to mix it up a lot, and I do uh, a lot of monsters and Halloween art, as well as nerdy art like Dungeons and Dragons and that kind of thing. And I also love drawing animals and fruits and vegetables. So those <laughs> are my general subject matters. Yeah, I, I seriously love your fruits and vegetables so much. I, I actually originally found Reagan, what was it, like two, three years ago? When did you originally do your your October list? Oh, my Inktober, the spooky and cozy one? Mm -hmm. That's right, I remember that. Oh my gosh, that was, I think, just 2019, actually. Yeah, so, so like two, uh, what year is it? I don't even know yeah. anymore. <laughs> two years ago? <laughs> years ago, some number of years ago, yeah. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I originally found Reagan uh, because her list was the original um, October list that I first did. That was the very first list that I ever completed. Um, and I just fell in love with your work. Um, also, by the way, and since I have this illustration up, happy first day of fall, everyone. Happy autumn. Woo! Best <laughs> season. Best season. <laughs> hey, Steve. Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, so if you guys uh, want to give Reagan a follow on Instagram, um, you can also check out her Patreon, which um, Sam, I think, uh, will link in the chat as well. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about what you do on Patreon, maybe a little later. Um, but let's go ahead and get into Photoshop and we can show these lovely people what we'll be working on. Oh, sounds great. Uh, right. I'll be working in Adobe uh, Fresco. Yes, yeah, so Reagan is in Fresco, I am in Photoshop, and I can show you guys um, what Reagan will be drawing. So this is the illustration that I drew for Reagan. So she will be recreating this one today. And this is Reagan's that I will be recreating today. <laughs> so if you guys want to, um, feel free. Also, if you wanna pick one or both, 
um, to recreate. We would love for you guys to get involved. You can join the Photoshop Discord and post them there in the uh, Draw This In Your Style channel, or you can post them on Instagram with the hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS. And um, we can hopefully, maybe towards the end of the stream, we can start showing off some of uh, some of your guys' entries from this, uh, this DTIYS and also from our last guest as well. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun to go start going through all of your guys' entries and stuff. All right. So one second, I'm just going to refresh the stream real quick, you guys, because I think my chat's getting messed up. One second. Okay, there we go. Looks better. Okay. Yeah, so I got a little bit of a head start on this one. Um, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I, I am such a slow sketcher. I don't know about you, Reagan. You're, you seem like you're blowing through this uh, oh, this thumbnail so? <laughs> over here. I am such a slow sketcher, so I always have to give myself a little bit of a head start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll see. I I did make mine is pretty. I did do a lot with the background. <laughs> I thought that before I got on here. I was like, uh. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. <laughs> I I seriously love this little this little frog friend right here this is this is my best friend now <laughs> <laughs> he's little so adorable gentleman. <laughs> gentleman. i love, I love the him. little goblin i i don't know why do you ever draw something and you're like i can't stop thinking about her like what is she, <laughs> what is she thinking right now <laughs> totally yeah so yes i'm i'm a i don't know if i'm a a faster slow sketcher you know we'll, we'll see at the end of this hour how uh, far i've gotten because um usually I, I start like super rough and small like this mm -hmm. and then i you know pull out pull it out to the full size and um see it's working so yeah we'll see yeah that's kind of how i work too um a lot of the time like i'll just like make a like a little thumbnail kind of mm. box like this and just kind of like yeah roughly do my sketch in there and then kind of blow it up yeah exactly um this one i actually didn't do that for which was a little different for me <laughs> i don't know why but uh you know things change as i as i figured out sometimes my my um workflow is just like ever changing all the time oh nice that, that sounds <laughs> stressful <laughs> <laughs> sometimes <laughs> or exciting you know you, you gotta yeah, like keep it fresh, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it's it's uh yeah, you gotta balance it for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, the little frog. Okay, I'm gonna try not to watch you. <laughs> it's so easy to get distracted, especially on stream when you're just chatting, and and then an hour goes by and you actually oh, haven't yeah. done anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is it is uh exceedingly likely that much of this will have to be done outside of the stream, but I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, Sam Peterson, our mod in chat says, I feel like my workflow slightly shifts every few months. I, th I think that happens to me sometimes when I change up my texture brush, like I'll just get bored with a texture brush that I've been using for a while. And then I'll be like, it's time to swap things up a little bit. And I'll just like pick a new brush. And suddenly my artwork is completely different. <laughs> that's fun. And that, that's a pretty good, um, like interval to do it, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, I think something that's really important is like finding some kind of, I mean, workflow that works for you kind of as soon as possible if you're new to drawing, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but then still being willing to try new things with it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Sometimes I have a, a problem with like every drawing that I do being like, everything has to be different this time. <laughs> to reinvent yourself completely using this one drawing. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me sometimes too, where I'm like, oh, well, this this illustration, it, it feels like I've done this already, but it's like, no, Cody, you haven't done that at all. Like, stop being so hard on yourself. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't have to be so different all the time. Oh, exactly. And in fact, there's like a lot of benefits to, you know, there, there's a reason there are styles, right? There's, right? there's a benefit to kind of doing things in a similar way a lot of the time, because otherwise no one knows what to expect from you. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah your your um, viewer base kind of gets an idea, mm -hmm. at, like just by looking at your feed on Instagram, for instance, of, mm -hmm. of what they can expect that you'll post. 
And then from the artist's perspective, it feels like, oh, my art's just getting stale. But really, in reality, these people are following you for that artwork over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or, you know, just that that's just how you get known for something but mm -hmm. still your your brain is like no i can't do it same way yeah do the same way do it totally different way <laughs> <laughs> okay actually maybe you're right maybe i am fast at sketching kind of like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm so slow i i'm even slower on stream too i i just that's actually kind of why i really love um the iPad, like I've had my, I've had my iPad for like a year now. I think I got it around this time last year and just being able to just like casually sketch while I'm laying on the couch is just so nice. Oh, nice. Because while laying down. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's just, it's just like chilling on the couch, just watching TV because like sitting at the, at my desk for so long can be exhausting because I'm so slow. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, I, I like to sit on the couch if I'm having like a long day of drawing mm -hmm. for, for work or, or something. Um, and, and I get um, a pillow like I have right here. Uh huh. And I prop uh, I prop my iPad up on a pillow, and you know I get I get my water. I get my little slippy glove. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's how you get in the work zone. Fantastic. <laughs> Hi, Tunk. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Potato, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Potato. Potato, yes. <laughs> I'm still also just getting used to my keyboard shortcuts here a little bit on my, my new Mac. It's a little, it's a little different my my muscle memory is so used to a pc keyboard and control and command are in two different spots so it's hard oh, to oh right um i gotta relearn that uh, muscle memory oh that's hard yeah <laughs> that's hard uh it's it's uh yeah the muscle memory where is the command key on an um, apple so the command key is directly to the left of space the space bar so it's like a few keys over from where um, mm. a control key usually is. Uh -huh. Trixie, Trixie slows you down a little bit. <laughs> Hi, Swoop. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Oh, by the way, you guys, I, I wanted to remind you or remind you to um, uh, sign up and register for Adobe Max. I'm wearing my uh, Adobe Max 2021 shirt today. Um, yeah, you guys could possibly win this shirt in a raffle. I, cause I did. <laughs> so register for Adobe Max. It's it's totally free this year. And um, Sam, I'm sure can uh, post the link in chat for you guys. Um, yeah, so register for Max, and you guys can check out what um, what the schedule will be like this year, and uh, who all what kind of speakers we got going on. That's gonna be the last week of October. Is Adobe Max uh, an online like convention type of thing? Um, so up until uh, COVID year, it, it was an in-person um, convention, um, kind of like the, almost like the equivalent of like E3 for the gaming community. Oh yeah. Um, but it, it's kind of just like Adobe's way of kind of like showing off all of their new programs and updates right. and stuff like that. Um, but ever since COVID, they um, put it completely online and it's and it's free now. So, um, and they okay. got like a bunch of speakers and panels and stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Where was it before in, in LA? I think it's in San Francisco or maybe, I think it's actually in different places every year. Maybe like, I think it's been in San Diego, San Francisco, LA, a bunch of different places. Cool. like the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Adobe Olympics. Uh -oh. Very nice. Ooh. 
Oh, so also going back to um, your Patreon, um, yeah. I have been subscribed to your Patreon in the past and I really love your Patreon a lot. I think oh. that it's super helpful. And I was wondering if you could maybe just like let everyone know like the kind of stuff that you have on there, um, like sure. for business stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, with my Patreon, um, if anybody is unfamiliar with Patreon, it's a um, a website platform that allows creators to provide uh, like exclusive content to patrons who give a month monthly pledge of a certain amount uh, to pay for that content and to allow individual creators uh, like artists, YouTubers, musicians, and that kind of thing to um, keep doing, keep making <laughs> and doing that since it's kind of a up and down job. Mm -hmm. And on um, my Patreon, uh, since 2019, I think, I have been trying to make it a space to answer questions about working as an illustrator um, and to like give more insight into the career with it, uh, into the illustrator career, and especially because um, I, I started this career in 2018 and I felt like there wasn't a lot of content for creators early for or from creators early in their career. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like figuring it out as they go along and sharing about their experiences that that way I felt like there was a lot of content from people who had been doing the job for you know 10 20 years which I think is also extremely helpful right um, but I thought it might be helpful to have information from someone like learning along with the audience in a way yeah definitely that has perhaps like done it just a little bit longer than the people who are coming into it um, so I have an arty business, a, a series I call arty business, um, and a couple other series that once a month, I like go in depth on some of these concepts, like developing your own style with art and doing packaging for your business and, um, and running an Etsy and like taking care of your body as an artist. And I talk about money and like taxes and um, go through like my opinions on things. And I just try to be like really open about doing this full time for people. And yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, for sure. I, I personally really loved uh, your um, articles talking about running a um, running a table at conventions and stuff like that. And also um, um, like just like getting your artwork um, like sold wholesale in stores and stuff like that. I thought that that was really interesting. And you're right. Like, I feel like I don't <clears throat> I don't see a lot of artists do like talking about that kind of stuff very often. So I thought it was yeah, uh, your articles are really well written. Um, and I personally gained a lot from them. So thank you for writing them. They're oh, really cool. you're I'm so glad to hear that. That's great. Yeah, I, uh, I had, I have a lot of trouble getting started with things if I feel like there's too much to learn at mm -hmm. once and I feel overwhelmed and like, I don't, you know, even know where to start. So I, I try to be like a voice of what I would have wanted before starting this um yeah. to be like you can kind of learn piece by piece and you can grow slowly you know you don't have to jump in all at once and like risk everything um yeah it's, it's I, I want i want it to be accessible basically yeah for sure so it's pretty fun and we also do things like movie nights and we have a holiday party <laughs> <laughs> in December and some, yeah, it's, it's a good time and everybody there is so nice. That's fun. Have you decided if you're gonna do um, an October list this year? Oh goodness, yeah. I was posting about that on Instagram yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, no, I don't know. Actually, I, I think I won't make a do list. Um, I put up a little poll about it for about five minutes and then felt embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, oh, I should just decide. This is pandery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, to hey, you got to be really committed to it because yeah. doing a list is a lot of work. So if you're not in it, trust me. <laughs> it's oh, a yeah. lot. Did it's you make one this year? Huh? Did you make one this year? I am not doing this one, uh, one this year because I'm doing Draw This In Your Style. <laughs> so doing doing a lot of those <laughs> yeah that's plenty of work on its own are you gonna do any drawings or just continue to do this um i don't know i guess we'll see it kind of just depends on um how much time i have i might mm -hmm. might do um some personal projects in the middle of in between that but um i also have a really ten a big tendency as an artist to burn out really quickly Oh, really? um, so I always have to like be really mindful of that. Mm. Otherwise you won't see me for six months on Instagram. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's really easy to, yeah. Especially with Instagram, you get a lot of, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of FOMO if I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing it this year. And then I get on mm -hmm. Instagram and I'm like, shame on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's not, it's not good. I, uh, I think, I, I think I'm, I'm going to try to at least, uh, do some drawings because I've been working on, um, my first, like, a, a, a book project, uh, since last year. And, um, that has taken all of my drawing time. Uh, so I've had very little, uh, personal art drawing mm. Well, that's cool though. You're working on a project. It is cool. It's great. It's great. Uh, it, it is great. <laughs> it's very um, uh, Urkama in chat is asking, um, uh, I really like the way you're going about your sketch, drawing a thumbnail and then blowing it up uh, to scale. Did you come up with that trick yourself or did you pick it up from somewhere? Oh, um, thank you. I... Do, I don't think I came up with it myself. Um, I think I, I must have seen a couple artists do it this way. Mm -hmm. Maybe did I make it up? <laughs> I, I think it, I think it's a, a pretty common um, technique. Yeah. Um, not not a Reagan trademark. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> well, let's just claim it now. It's yeah. I yeah, there you go. It's me. <laughs> and say this is the Reagan Reagania tactic. <laughs> Um, tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it, it it's helpful because like drawing small first um, is helpful because for one, it makes you, it kind of forces you to not draw all of the details all at once. Mm -hmm. um, and it also helps um, to get proportions. Uh, proportions are a little bit easier to draw when you're drawing super small yeah. um, rather than, you know, having to go draw really big shapes across your canvas. Um, so drawing in a thumbnail can be really helpful, um, if you're trying to just get an idea down or a concept. Um, and then it's also really helpful to draw multiple thumbnails too. Um, if you have multiple different compositions in mind, maybe, and you want to put all of those down and then maybe use like a little bit of something from one composition and then a little bit of something from another one, and then you can make a new thumbnail and combine it. And if you're only drawing like really simplistic sketches, then with not a lot of detail, then you're not wasting a ton of time by starting and restarting a bunch of sketches. Yeah, that's that's also why I keep um, like zooming out like this and mm -hmm. looking up at my computer screen where my iPad is mirrored up there because getting um, some distance really helps to see if your shapes are going in the direction you want them to. Right. Um, Another thing you can do if you're drawing traditionally is, I mean, either like hold it way back from yourself. That's why, you know, people kind of like go like that. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I also like to take a picture of it with my iPad or my phone. Like, mm. so just that like separation of looking at it through your, your phone or computer or something, just, I don't know, helps, helps my brain understand it better. Uh, Sam in chat says, yeah, thumbnailing is great to see how everything relates um, to each other. 
to scroll up. The chat went by so fast, <laughs> really to each other too, and focus on big shapes. Uh, I try to keep zoomed out as much as I can for that reason. Hi, Annika. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> if you guys are uh, just coming in, by the way, um, our draw this in your style uh, theme this week is uh, bus stop. I actually don't think I even mentioned that before. Our theme this week was bus stop. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the one that I drew for Reagan. And this is the one that Reagan drew for me. Very cute, very cute. So um, right now I'm just starting to draw the little the, the little lady sitting on the couch, freaked out by the goblin character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving how your little bear character is turning out. He's looking super cute. <laughs> oh, thank you. Got, got great uh, subject matter to draw from. I'm excited to see you draw people. Yes, uh, it happens every once in a while, yeah. not very often. But um, on a rare occasion, it does. <laughs> on, a, on a bear occasion? A bear occasion, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> a bear occasion. Always the bear puns on my streams. <laughs> the bear puns on the stream. You can't not. <laughs> yeah, you're getting me out of my comfort zone here with John. John people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was telling Cody earlier, uh, she's getting, she almost got me out of my comfort zone <laughs> with the browns in her drawing. I never use brown and I never, I never will. <laughs> <laughs> I love brown. I'm just, I mean, my, my nails are brown right now. I'm, I'm a, I'm a brown woman, but I don't think this is the day. I've already, I already added black to my color palette recently. That's actually a, a really good segue. I was curious, how, how did you get to use the color, like the really bright, um, very uh, simplistic palette that you use in your artwork? How did you, how did you eventually get to that point? Oh, yeah. Um, I, um, sorry, uh, using a new tool, I haven't. That's okay. Um, okay, so my color palette, yeah. I, uh, I basically just early on in my career realized, or in my, yeah, career, realized I was drawing with colors that didn't feel very me mm -hmm. and I didn't know why. And partially it's because I wasn't quite paying attention to like the types of colors I was using. And I was using a very, uh, pastel color palette mm. just kind of like by default without paying attention to it so I, I literally took like a month or a couple weeks to, to try to decide my favorite types of colors that I mm. wanted to use um, especially because this is when I started drawing digitally uh, and when you're drawing digitally you have like all possible colors right it's not like having you know tubes of paint that you can just like mix together it's it's like the the gamut is available to you so i felt like it would be useful and a, a speedy shorthand to um to do some actual thinking and, and studying um and i looked at uh Think, I looked at art that I liked, first of all, and I looked at interior design that I liked, mm -hmm. and I looked at the items that I already owned in my home, which is an indicator of like, yes, these are colors that I like, if that makes right. sense. And in particular, I had a couple items um, that were like very precious to me that I like carried with me wherever I moved and throughout college and throughout my life. And I saw this very bright, primary color palette with a focus on red <laughs> in a lot of these items so I was like oh yeah I do I love these colors mm -hmm. and, and I just uh made a color for palette for myself and challenged myself to use those and use those for everything basically and um I li liked a lot the challenge of having a really limited color palette and having mm -hmm. to uh work on designs within a limited color palette so yeah 
just looked at what I liked and developed a color palette from that and then stuck to it forcefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say I added black to my color palette um, because I, I generally use a very limited amount of colors. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting. I actually um, typically will say the same thing um, to um, people watching the stream. <clears throat> if they're trying to figure out what kind of colors uh, they really like and what kind of colors they want to use in their artwork, a great place to start is looking at the things that you own already, like looking at your, um, you know, your dream wardrobe or your dream uh, interior design um, and look at what colors you are just naturally drawn to. Um, like if you were gonna buy a notebook at a store, what color cover would you want it to be? Like that kind of thing. Um, and that's, that's a really great starting point. Um, not all artists like wear the colors that they use in their mm -hmm. artwork. Like there are definitely some artists that wear all black, but their artwork is pastel, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it's a great way. It's, it's a great, it's a great starting point. Um, because I mean, for me, at least, um, my wardrobe definitely matches my artwork. So, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it, it was finding out the colors that I really wanted to use in my artwork, like actually just like helped me understand myself better too. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, that, it's funny that you say that people don't always like dress the same way as their, um, as their color palette, because <laughs> I, I um, especially during autumn and winter, love to wear all black. I love like black and dark purple lipstick or really mm -hmm. dark red lipstick just dark color. I'm, I like dark colors a lot. <laughs> and one time I posted a, a picture of a makeup look that I do pretty frequently with, with just very dark lipstick and all black clothes. And someone was like, oh, goth Ragonia. Oh no, my <laughs> nightmares. And I was like, goth Ragonia is here all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just can't see her. It's, it's not part of the brand, but it's, it's there. <laughs> But yeah, I do feel like if I go to a convention, I have to wear my most primary colored clothing. Right. You got to stick to the brand. <laughs> yeah, I'm not on brand today. I I'm on October brand. <laughs> You're on my brand. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the yeah the like tan brown. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did this for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in chat. Hi, I'm new here. My name is uh, Muhit. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining. It's good to see you. Welcome. Herkomet says, Ragonia's alligator is looking so cute. I love the way that you did his teeth. It's kind of just like, like that wavy line like that. That's a really nice, like simplistic shape. I really like that a lot. Oh yeah. Thank you. I was, I was, uh, wondering if I should add teeth, but if you think this reads as teeth? Yeah, I think it does. Oh, that's great. I love that. Okay, I'm sticking, I'm, I'm leaving it. <laughs> Th and thank you to, to chat. Yes. Friend, chat friend. Um, I also want to note, um, if anybody was curious, I have uh, another way to help visualize your composition well for me is to um, flip the canvas um, to mirror the cam canvas with whatever tool you're using. Yeah, definitely. Helps uh, make sure everything's looking right. Yeah, flipping the canvas, um, if you guys are unfamiliar with why an artist would do that, um, sometimes like flipping the canvas uh, would mostly be done for digital art because obviously you can't, you can't really do that with a painting. But um, however, you can use a mirror, you can hold your art oh, up. Oh, yeah, very that's, smart. It's actually the old school way to do it. Like the mat, like very old school, hundreds of years. Wow, was, yeah. I've actually never heard of that before. I'm uh -huh. gonna put that in my knowledge repertoire because <laughs> <laughs> that's never occurred to me before. Wow, my mind is blown. 
Yay. Um, <laughs> but um, so flipping the canvas digitally in the, in the digital sense, um, here I can give you guys an example. I can do it right here. Um, you flip it horizontally so it mirrors itself. Um, so it's it kind of helps give you fresh eyes um, being able to see it from a flipped perspective. Um, and it's kind of does it a little bit. It's, it helps also to like zoom out, but it kind of, um, flipping the canvas kind of does a little bit, um, of a different, it, it's like, it helps in a different way. Like for instance, yeah. since I just flipped this canvas, I can see that, um, her anatomy is off quite a bit. Um, I don't know if you guys could see that before I could, but since I've been looking at it this whole time, um, your eyes kind of get used to how you skew your drawings. So flipping it can kind of like just help you be able to refresh your eyes and be able to see it a little differently. So I'm going to push her shoulder up a little bit higher here. Yeah, and... it helps you see like uh, where things are uneven, I feel like. Especially yeah, yeah. Like if one thing's higher than the other. You can't really see it with the way you get used to it and then you flip it you're like oh this is way up here it's especially yeah. good i think for yeah anatomy and faces especially mm -hmm. because you'll you know you'll draw like one eye like way down here and strangely your brain gets used to it facing that way and then you flip it and you're like oh goodness <laughs> yeah gotta bring that back up <laughs> <laughs> yeah i also have a tendency to like draw slanted so when I flip my canvas, I'm like, okay, got to use transform distort and just bring that back up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's a common one for sure. Uh, Sam and Chad is asking, do either of you usually have conventions as a small or major part of your art uh, art and income, not counting the past year or two of no conventions? Uh, yeah, for me, yes. Yes, it was a major part of my income. Yeah. <laughs> sad, sad, sadly. How, how often would you go to conventions? So let's see. So my first year, I went to one convention in a lot of little markets around Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, and the little markets were uh, nowhere near equal in, in income. In fact, after that year, I decided, you know, it was, it was a good practice to start doing things like art walks and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, coming out of it with like $100 after, you know, six hours. <laughs> right is that uh, not a good use of time uh but then the next year i did oh maybe three larger conventions or markets or four so that was every couple months and then for 2020 i actually had the most planned yet i had um <laughs> yeah <laughs> i had i think five lined up across the country oh wow um yeah i was gonna go to one in denver wherever i had family basically right um that i could stay with uh just as a you know extra safety net because you kind of don't know how busy a uh, convention is going to be i mm -hmm. think until you go to it uh, um so yeah definitely once uh once everything's not like this anymore i I, I hope to do it at, at least five a year or so, at least, yeah. I love them. It's one of my favorite parts of being an artist. <clears throat> yeah, I've actually never, uh, I've only ever been to one convention. It was Comic-Con New York one year. Um, me and my husband CJ went um, just for fun, but I've, I've never even looked into tabling as an artist or what it takes to table um do you usually have to like rent out a table like for those that are completely unfamiliar like how is how does the process go yeah great oh this is one of my favorite talks of conversation <laughs> yes you do have to rent a table um depending on the size of the convention it's uh i haven't been to any of the bigger conventions i think the biggest convention i've been to was rose city comic-con in portland mm -hmm. in 2019 
and that was uh, quasi, you know, it's it's nothing. I'd say nothing. It's awesome. I love it so much. And it, but it's like nowhere near the size of like Emerald City Comic Con, New York City Comic Con, right? San Diego Comic Con, right? So I haven't even been to like New York. I bet that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty big. Um, but at least for the like I'd say mid size conventions like Rose City Comic Con, I believe that table for that was three hundred dollars mm, okay. for a full table in the artist alley um at a smaller convention like geek girl con in seattle um mm-hmm. which is a convention focused on um women in arts and like nerddom in general i believe a table there for artist alley costs uh two hundred dollars i think um that was actually my first convention which it was so good (laughs) if anybody's in the Seattle area in the future I love geek girl con um and let's see a table at like a a big uh craft fair like I went to one called urban 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 craft uprising right here in Seattle believe that table was five hundred dollars oh wow yeah, that was that was the most expensive one I've done. Um, and for me, a craft the craft fair was less busy than a comic con, mm-hmm. or at least what I had then in my table then. Um, so yeah, it it costs you know in the couple hundreds of dollars. And if you get like a booth, like a vendor would uh, that sells you know that it's not in the artist alley. The artist alley is discounted basically. And a booth, I think, can cost anywhere from five hundred to seven hundred to like a thousand dollars for a booth. Wow, that's crazy. It is crazy, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's uh, you you do make a, a good, you know, depending on what you're selling and how much you're selling and how busy it is and how well your things sell, you can make a a good chunk of change. Right, it's a business expense, so for you know sure. you you make that up. Well, hopefully you make that up um, in your profits. Yeah, it does depend on your art and, you know, how spendy people are feeling. All kinds of things can affect, um, can affect if you, you know, make a lot of money or not. Sure. So you sell, you typically sell like more than just prints, right? Like I've seen, I've seen some of your setups on your Instagram before where you have um, like jewelry and stuff like that for you personally, what do you think, what do you feel like sells the best? Like, like, is it prints or is it the, the other things that you have? Yeah, I should know this. Um, cause actually the, I use square to, mm. uh, to do my, uh, to do my bookkeeping and mm-hmm. manage my, my, uh, money at conventions and it tells you it breaks down based on what people buy so it, it tells you and if I'm remembering correctly I think prints are the best uh the best seller at conventions for me mm-hmm. um, but I think I, I have a majority of prints the last the times that I went before um as is opposed to some people have like a lot of pins Right? Oh, mm-hmm. or and they have just like a wall of pins, or some people have tons of stickers, and like it. it I feel like it kind of depends on what the majority of your products are, right? Um, but actually, at a lot of the conventions that I've gone to, the thing that makes them a big amount of money based on how much I have and what I sell it for is original drawings. Um, Mm. usually I put a couple of those up and like cycle them out. I just have like a little corner of like original art or maybe like a little display with them. And because those are selling for like at least a hundred dollars or around a hundred dollars, you, you basically just don't have to sell as many to like make up for, you know, a $10 print. So if anybody goes to conventions, don't rule out bringing some like Inktober originals or just Mm. any like original art that you have and sell them for more than ten (laughs) dollars right benefit of doing traditional artwork on top of digital artwork yes exactly exactly (laughs) 
yeah, that, that is one benefit. Um, yeah, of course, if, any, if you do original, like traditional. Uh, yeah, that is a benefit. And yeah, I say more than $10 because I, I get kind of upset sometimes if I go to conventions and see people selling their like full original drawings for $10. Oh my goodness, are you serious? Yes. Wow. Oh, stab me in the heart. <laughs> oh, that's that's so hard to see when when artists are just really selling themselves short. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah. Your your gal is so cute. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I it's, love it so much. <laughs> My gal, I love that. Your gal. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm so, like I said, I'm so slow, especially with drawing humans because I, um, just don't draw them very often, but we're getting there slowly, but surely, surely. She, she looks great. I'm trying to think of what cartoon she reminds me of. I feel it, it, it reminds me of a certain cartoon style. I can't, I can't think and of it kind of looks like a old school Nick Nickelodeon or something like Cartoon oh, Network. Yeah. <laughs> the braids remind me a little bit of the secret of Kells. Oh, uh-huh. That, um, just that very <laughs> uh, patterned style. Right. Love it. Love it. Hi, Dee. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, Dee says, $10? What? Seriously? Yes. Yeah, heartbreak for $15. I was like, girl. I literally, I was like, I was like, hi, nice to meet you. Um, you should not sell your, yeah, it's just my opinion, but this is way too cheap. And she's like, what? I was like, yeah, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to mention again, you guys, if any of you are going to be participating in either of these, uh, draw this in your styles, feel free to post them on Instagram. Um, and we will see them uh, with hashtag um, Adobe Live DTIYS. And you can tag both of us in the description and the photo. It helps a lot. Um, just like tagging in the photo um, can help if there's like a ton of entries. Um, it just makes it easier to sift through things. Um, and also if uh, you post it in the uh, Photoshop Discord, it will um, very, be very easy for me to see as well. Um, you can just post it in the, uh, draw this in your style channel and we can all just chat about it and have fun. And you can post, uh, your works in progress too. Uh, we can just, we can just have a good time, a good old dandy time. I just want to have a good time. <laughs> We are actually coming up soon on the end of the stream. Wow. I know already the, the one hour streams go by so fast. So um, fast. In a little bit, I want to actually check out the Discord and probably the Instagram so we can uh, show off some of your guys' fun entries. Um, there have already been a handful of entries for this Draw This In Your Style. So I wanted to show those off since Reagan is going to be here with us. Uh, and then we can also show off some from our previous episode with uh, Stevie Ray Drawn, which is a lot of fun. I don't know if you saw any of those, Reagan. I did. Very cute. <laughs> uh, Stevie Ray Drawn uh, was actually another member of the uh, Twitch stream team back in the day. The Adobe oh. stream team. Yeah. Stevie Ray Drawn. Very funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just got it. I didn't get it until you said it out loud. <laughs> I just realized I did not leave room for Miss Goblin here. So we got to shift these friends around. <laughs> the Yoblin. <laughs> no one ever leaves room for the Yoblin. I'm going to put this, this pal in the, in the sweater. Very stylish goblin. Got a little, got a little puffy sweater on, a sweat, yes. puffy, puffy jacket, little beret. Yes. Very nice. Oh, got got some little little heel heel boots right there. Booties. Where's wow. she going? 
she's on a mission. She's she's going somewhere fancy. <laughs> Can't get her out of my mind. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it is about that time, Reagan, mm -hmm. that um, we are going to pop on over and check out some of our our um, wonderful DCIYS entries. Yay! Thank you guys uh, so much for drawing with us today. Um, and we are going to pop on over. All right, so I wanted to go to the Instagram hashtag first because this is where the majority of the ones um, for this specific uh, uh, hashtag is for. Um, and I wanted to start with, for, whoa, my mouse is doing something weird there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this one I thought was super cute. Uh, a lot of these came in this morning. Um, and I, I also, by the way, we're also posting them to our Instagram stories if you want to post them on uh, through Instagram. Um, so you guys can get um, little shout outs here and there. Um, but I just, I just really loved the, um, like the halftone colors and just like the really simplistic shapes. I thought it was just super cute. Uh, it almost looks like, um, like, a, a kid's illustration for like maybe like highlight notes or something like that I could see it being yeah. like an editorial really simplistic illustration I thought it was super cute yeah I love it I love the little v for the the um alligator's mouth it yeah like, it, like a <laughs> it just looks like he would be talking with a hinge on his <laughs> mouth <laughs> it's very cute I love it and this one I thought was super cute as well just had like a really like uh, kawaii look um, mm -hmm. to the art. Um, just the little bear. The little bear has little eyelashes. Um, yeah. she, she gave him a little a little skirt and a little sweater vest. So cute. So cute. <laughs> and if you guys want to follow any of these people, um, feel free. It's very easy to just check out all of the entries at once if you just uh, search the hashtag at WLiveDTIYS. And then you can also follow the hashtag um, and then all of the posts will show up on your feed too. So then that makes it really easy if you want to check them out, check them all out. This one came in this morning too. Um, super cute. Oh my goodness. I love the, it's, it's almost like a colored pencil texture. This little, oh, yeah. almost looks like a little old man sweater vest with <laughs> little elbow pads. It's, it's so adorable. I love this so much. It's fun <laughs> to see the different outfits that people put the little characters in yeah right they're like oh, they're all almost like little paper dolls yeah <laughs> so cute this one was really cute too oh, <laughs> oh lovely. so cute <laughs> they look like little stuffed animals yeah <laughs> so much character they got little fuzz on the on those shirts make give them a little a little bit of threads here and there and stuff oh. and <laughs> so cute and this one is of Reagan's. Look at the little goblin. Oh, and then the frog is sitting in her lap. <laughs> so a cute. Little smiley sun in the background. <laughs> oh, and this one is one of my favorites. Very cool. Um, did a little embroidery of the frog. Um, very cute. And they have um, a little video of it here. With the little broom instead yeah. of the bus stop. Little broom stop. <laughs> <laughs> so cute i noticed in the background of this uh this one they have another piece of your artwork hanging on their wall too which is really cool yeah <laughs> they're actually they're one of my patrons oh really nice yep yep they do great embroidery so if we head over to the Discord, um, I have a handful of ones. I don't know if any of you, uh, any of you guys in chat saw some of our entries from last week. Uh, this was the very first one that we got and uh, I love it so much. The textures, uh, the watercolor oh. textures are so pretty. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, just the way that they did the background, it just like kind of like these blobby shapes, just like to imply that there's more leaves in the background and stuff. I think the execution is really, really beautiful. Gorgeous. Mm 
and some of these other yeah. ones are just so cute. Yeah. I, I, I just, I just love all of these entries and I love, I love also being able to talk to you guys through your process. Uh, just like everyone posting whips and stuff in the discord is really, uh, just a lot of fun. Um, I love this. I love how they did the hair for the fairy on this one. Just very voluminous. I wish I could get my hair that vol voluminous. <laughs> <laughs> I like those sleeves. Yeah. The puffy sleeves. Yeah. I love, uh, especially, um, like coming from like a very simplistic style where I don't always necessarily have a ton of detail. It's always fun to see how other people will interpret that style in their own way. Um, and I got like just a bunch of different versions of this dress, um, in the shoes and stuff. And it's, it's always just really fun to see how, uh, how everyone will interpret the same drawing. <laughs> this one's so cute. <laughs> oh. Gosh. oh, I love that branch. Yeah, I know. Right. All the little, the little, uh, just marks on it. It's just so pretty. It has such a nice texture. Oh, all that. right, you guys. Well, that is about time to wrap it up. Thank you so much, Reagan, uh, for joining us today. If you guys want to check out her work, um, again, please uh, check out her Instagram, um, just at Ergonia underscore. And um, we will be back tomorrow to start working on maybe coloring these, or I guess we'll see how far I get on my sketch. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, right. thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. And um, we will be back tomorrow, same time, same place at uh, 3 to 4 p.m. PT. And we will see you then. Thank you so much for hanging out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.